Hello, so I've got a few more problems here in front of me, some revision questions um, when it comes to sketching the curves of, uh, uh, of the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Um, so I thought I'd just work through them quite qu uh, quickly as part of the sketching curves playlist. Um, right, so the first one is, uh, uh, and, and it states um, to factorize the following equations and then sketch the curves. And the first uh, equation we have here is y equals x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. Um, and actually what immediately stands out, and this is a, a neat little trick, um, something to look out for. Um, I believe it is applicable to any order of polynomial uh, where if the coefficients add to zero then we know that we've got a solution at one. So uh, in this case uh, uh, one is in front of this x of course and one right is implicit. One plus one is two minus two well that's going to be zero. So it turns out we should have a solution at one. Um, but I'm not going to go too far into that um, at this point but nevertheless um, it's something to look out for. We know that we'll have at least a solution at one. We'll have one at zero as well. But uh, I'm getting way ahead of, way, way, uh, w jumping way too far ahead here. Okay. So, um, but that is a neat tip. And um, in any case, and moving on, we need to factorize this. Um, and so we can just pull out an x, right? We've got a, a common factor here of x. So we can pull out an x, and we are, we are left with x squared plus x minus two. And uh, now we just need to uh, uh, factor this quadratic in the brackets. And again, I'm not going to skip steps. So let's just, uh, we need to find or think about AC. Well, A is 1 and C is negative 2. Uh, so A times C is negative 2. We need to think about what multiplies to negative 2 and adds to B, which is 1. Um, and so, well, 1 times negative 2 certainly adds, uh, multiplies to negative 2. Uh, but it's it, it is it's definitely not going to add to one positive one. But if we say negative one times two, well that's going to multiply to negative two, and that's going to add to one. So those are our two factors. We've got x squared plus or sorry, negative x plus two x uh, minus two. And uh, yeah, so we just carry on with our factorization here. Um, and I'm going to use square brackets at this point. So we can factor out an x here. We're left with x minus 1. Factor out a 2. And we are left with x minus 1. And so we, are, we end up with x uh, and, uh, times x minus 1. And we've got um, x plus 2. And of course, all of this is set to equal zero, right? I, I didn't, I don't write it all the time. I just sort of implied at this point, but um, yeah. So it's all set to equal zero. So we're just solving for x, and we have solutions for x. Um, well, at uh, at negative two, at zero, and at one. Right, and as I said uh, for that chip, I knew it could tell immediately that we we're going to have a solution at 1. And again, it's because if the coefficients, and I believe this yeah, is applicable to any order of polynomial, uh, in this case, uh, if they add to 0, then we know we're going to have a solution at 1. Right, okay, and so um, uh, we can basically look to sketch this graph. Um, but the next thing we need to do quickly is figure out what happens. Um, we have very large values, positive values of x, and very large negative values of x. Uh, and so we can write that as x to, uh, in this form as x tends toward positive infinity. What does y tend toward? Well, we just insert. Uh, uh, um, in this case, five would be more than sufficient um, uh, as a large positive value. Um, you don't need to go so high as 100 or anything, uh, in this case at least. Uh, and so, I'm just going to insert 5 into this right here. Okay, uh, And so, we've got 5 times 5. Uh, we're going to substitute uh, in 5 for x, right? And so, 5 times 5 minus 1 times 5 plus 2. Uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. 5 plus 2 is 7. 
we're going to end up with a positive value. So that already gives us the answer that we're looking for. Uh, and that actually uh, 5 times 4 is 20 times 7 is uh, 140. Um, and so this is what, uh, what that tells us is that as x tends toward positive infinity, right? Increasingly large numbers, positive values for x, while y tends also toward positive infinity. And that's exactly what, um, what we wanted to find. Um, and um, so again, I'll just pick arbitrary number because we need to find now what x, as x tends toward negative infinity, which is y tend toward. Uh, and I'll just uh, use f uh, 5. Again, it's just an arbitrary number. Usually, you want to pick larger values. Um, it depends. I can already see here that this should be more than sufficient. But um, in any case, so we're going to substitute negative 5 into this. So negative 5 times negative 1, negative 5 plus 2. So negative 5, this is going to be negative 6. Negative 5 minus 1 neg is negative 6. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Uh, and we can see already that we're going to have a, a negative value, right? We've got three negatives here uh, because uh, negative five times negative six is uh, is positive thirty, and if you multiply that by negative three, you're going to get negative ninety. And so what that tells us is that as x tends toward negative infinity, y is also going to tend toward negative infinity. So now we can uh, we can uh, certainly sketch this graph. Um, and again, it's just a sketch, but um, We'll just label this here. We've got a negative 2. We know we have a solution at the origin. And just label this 1. And we know that we're coming from the third quadrant up, right? Because as x gets increasingly negative, um, uh, so as x uh, moves further and further toward the negative direction, y is also getting increasingly negative, right? Further and further in the negative direction. So we know we're coming from, we know we're coming from the, the third quadrant. So it's going to come up like this, our graph. We're going to cross at 2, that's one of our solutions. It's going to loop back down like this, cross at the origin, which happens to be also be our y-intercept. And come right back up, cross at 1, and it's going to go up like that. Right, so let's do another one. Um, say that we are given, I'll just scroll down a little bit. Say that we are given... Uh, y equals uh, x minus um, uh, uh, x cubed, right? And so, uh, yeah, then the other the thing to realize again here is we've got a common factor of x, right? So, it makes it quite it makes life quite easy, and all we need to do is factor an x, and that leaves us with one minus x squared. Um, and the next thing to realize here is that this is a difference of squares. So we can rewrite that as x, 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, so, um, now we, we, we've, we've got our solutions, right? Because this is set to equal 0. Uh, and so we know our values for x. Uh, x is going to equal negative 1. It's going to equal 0. And it's going to equal 1. Um, and so we are almost ready to sketch this graph. If I draw it very quickly, here like that, we've got uh, negative 1. We know we've got a solution at the origin. We've got 1. Um, and so um, we, we just need to find now what happens when x tends toward uh, positive infinity. Uh, what happens when x tends? Uh, what happens to y? What does y tend toward? Um, and again, I'll just use an arbitrary number. I'll just use five, and I'm just going to substitute five in in here for x. So we've got five times one minus five times one plus five. Um, well, one minus five is certainly that's negative four. One plus five is six. We're going to have a negative value here, um, very clearly because. Um, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And negative 20 times 6 is going to be negative 120. So it's a negative value. So as x tends toward positive infinity, y tends toward negative infinity. Now, what happens when x tends toward... when x 
tends toward uh, negative infinity. What does y do? What, what's happening with y? Well, let's just stop again. Let's just use negative 5 this time. So negative 5 and substitute it into this. Negative 5 times uh, 1 minus negative 5 times uh, 1 plus negative 5. Well, um, we've got a double negative, so this is um, going to be 1 plus 5, which is 6. That's going to give us negative 30. And we've got 1 plus negative 5, that's 4. Um, I'm sorry, that's negative 4. Um, and so we've got negative 30 times negative 4, which is uh, uh, negative or positive 120. Um, and so that tells us that um, as x tends toward negative infinity, y tends toward positive infinity. Um, because that's a positive value, clearly. And uh, we don't actually need to multiply all that out. Again, I like I said, you just need to find what the sign is, really. It's positive or negative. That's what we're looking for. Um, but in any case, so um, we know that as x um, it's increasingly large, positive value, like uh, so, as it tends toward positive, as it tends toward positive infinity, y is uh, negative, and so we know in that, therefore, that we're going to be um, coming up from the fourth quadrant, like this. We have a solution at one. It's going to uh, graph our curve is going to kind of loop back down and cross at the origin cross at the origin here, and then it's going to loop back up and cross at negative 1, and uh, that's not very neat, but um, in any case, it's going to look something something like that. Right, um, so yeah, that's the, that's the curve for y equals x minus x cubed. Uh, so I'll just do one more very quickly here, um, because this one looks interesting. Uh, we have y equals x cubed uh, minus 9x squared. Um, so again, we have a common factor, clearly, right? x, and uh, we can factor out an x, but as a matter of fact, we can factor out an x squared. So we can put x squared, and that's going to leave us with, with x minus 9. Um, and so our, our, our two solutions for our three solutions for x, well, uh, x equals 0, right? if we set this to equal 0, we're just solving for x again. Um, so when um, we have, um, so x equals 0 twice, and I'll just write that twice, and, and as well x equals 9, we've got a solution, a root at, at, at positive 9. Um, and so we can almost sketch this. I'll just draw it very quickly, saying we've got 9, that's the origin of course, and this x-axis and y-axis, um, and we've got uh, two roots at the origin, um, and so we just need to f find out what happens now, as x tends toward positive infinity, and 5 is not going to work here, it, look, does, it looks like it won't work, we'll see why in a moment, and so an x tends toward positive infinity, y tends toward what, so that's what we need to find, so I, I, can't, use, I can't use 5 here, uh, and again, this is why one has to be careful um, to kind of, I suppose, find the middle ground, you could use lar large values all the time, like 100 or 1000, uh, it's not always necessary, um, so, uh, but if I use 5, then it would be 5 squared, positive 5 that is, and then 5 minus 9, well that's going, 5 minus 9, that's negative 4, right, and 5 squared is 25, and if I multiply 25 by negative 9, I'm going to get a negative value. So the moment say, okay, this is tending toward negative infinity, but that's not the case, because if we take a larger value, let's say 10, should be more than enough here, well we'd have, if we substitute 10 in for x, we get 10 squared times 10 minus 9. 10 minus 9 is 1, 10 squared is 100, 100 times 1 is a hundred is positive, right? So that's one has to be careful just to make sure uh, um, that you're getting um, uh, the right value, the right sign that we that we're using a high enough um, 
a, a, a value to see what happens when x is really large and really small, or uh, uh, really large and positive, and, 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 and certainly increasingly negative, as it tends toward negative infinity. So in this case, we know that as x tends toward positive infinity, y tends toward positive infinity. Now, let's see what happens as x tends toward negative infinity. Y tends toward what? Well, I'll use I will use negative ten this time. Negative ten squared times negative ten minus nine. Uh, well, that's negative ten uh, minus nine is negative nineteen, and we've got um, negative ten squared. Well, that's just going to be positive one hundred, and positive one hundred times uh, negative nineteen. Uh, we just add the zero, obviously, and it's just going to be uh, 1900 negative 1900. So that tells us that uh, y tends toward negative infinity. So now we can sketch it, and uh, so we're com we're going to be coming up from the the third quadrant uh, clearly, and we've got uh, two roots, two solutions at the origin. What that means is that graph's going to come up like this, and it's not going to quite cross. It's just going to be at a tangent, right at the point of the origin. And then it's going to come down a little bit, and then it's going to come back up. Cross at 9, that's where our root is, our solution. And then it's just going to go up like this.